Happy Sabbath, friends. On this Sunday morning in the midst of the pandemic and a confusing year, we have arrived at the third Sunday in Advent, believe it or not. In the ancient world, people lit fires to mark the turning of the light into winter season and to pray for the return of the light. The church turned that practice into the lighting of the Advent wreath as signs of the growing light of Christ who is coming again in all fullness into the darkness of our world. We watch and wait, Christ coming into the darkness of our world, lighting candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, and remembering the promises of God with prayer. Today and each day of the coming week, we will pray about joy. Let's pray together. Lord, many call you Father, but many know you by other names. Regardless of how we know you, hear us as we call to you. We come before you this day with joy to the world on our hearts and minds. We want to be with others as we sing Christmas songs of joy. We want thoughts of the pandemic, systemic racism, and election strife to be behind us. We look forward to that which is to come in our lives and in the world. Friends, today as we gather in prayer, I invite you to think about the sheer joy that can be found in your life that can come in the celebration of Advent and Christmas. The kind of joy that you see on the faces of children on Christmas morning, the kind of joy that an expectant mother feels as her unborn child leaps within. As we continue in prayer, Lord, we pray that you will guide us to know how we can find joy in our lives. We know that joy brings strength and that our joy can be found in you. We have been taught that we should consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. We seek joy in our lives. We seek to place all that counters joy behind us. We seek joy. We will find it in you. Amen. Friends, the text for today is commonly referred to as the Magnificat. The Magnificat has occupied an important place in the liturgy of the church since around the fourth century. The canticle is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55, where the events of the visitation of Mary to her cousin Elizabeth are recorded. Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John the Baptist at the time, greeted Mary with the well-known phrase, Blessed art thou amongst women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I read to you from Luke 1. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Sabbath.